What's good YouTube, it's Castle Scope. we're back on another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my design breakdown for the Devin Booker Give Me Your Soul tutorial, or not even a tutorial, just what I did on this design. So it's gonna be my first breakdown on the page, and this has a lot of elements to it, so I don't wanna waste too much time, so let's get right into it. Make sure you guys drop a like, and comment what you wanna see next on the channel down below. Okay, so this was the design that we made, but I'm gonna start at the, just the black background that I used, right? and like i said there's so many so many layers so i'm not going to spend too much time on each if you have specific questions please let me know but let's just go through every layer because i think this is going to help you guys out with just kind of just your concepts that you're going to be making and just maybe even spark some ideas for you to do in the future and also critique my work right so we started off with the main background and this is the main background the actual background that's there from the from the beginning this is just like a little farm landscape and all we did on here I clipped a hue and saturation layer to this and I just slided it over put it on colorized slid it over to like the purple and I dropped the saturation down a little bit and then with my white brush white puts new things or white will take put things on and then black takes away so we put um, just some white and we just carefully went over it my flow was down probably around 30 I'm thinking when I did the design, probably around 30, and we slowly built up some elements of color on there. And that, yeah, that's pretty much how we did that part. And then for exposure adjust, I just offset it and drop the exposure down a little bit because I want it to be that dark theme for when we have the glow so it has a difference of, a different contrast, a really good contrast, right? So our second picture is the mountains, right? The mountains in the background. This is the OG picture, okay? That's the OG picture. When you make a smart layer, you can just go into the OG picture. Sometimes I, I re-smart layer things and I can't go, but on, mostly on these, I uh, kept it to a smart layer. So what we did on here is we utilized a lot of curves and color balance. So the first thing I did was I added like some white clouds on there. And then I, then I put the brightness and contrast down because we still want it to match. You just want to make sure everything is matching on your on your backgrounds you don't want to have like blue black it's little no just match everything in your backgrounds off the off rip so that you don't have to worry about that stuff after okay and one other thing is i put this on soft light so they would kind of just blend into my background even easier and here's the other smoky nature picture that we used and we put the curves on curves is just going to make sure that your stuff is um just getting darker or lighter you can you can really pinpoint things and the good thing about curves is when you pinpoint things in curves you can uh, see how I make this like boring arch you can start varying it and it's gonna make things more metallic -y or more yeah just more more metallic -y, I'd say so it has more texture to it so then we use our background texture that was pretty much just this and then I color corrected it once again um not too much to have to go over on that one so then we have our moon this is our this is our og moon pick it's a little bit cut out because i i masked a little bit out of it first before i started just going over with soft brush to brush things out and then i just with this one i added a little a little light on it see how i'm see how that let's see see how that light's changing a little bit it was just a little white light that i put on soft light and then i gaussian blurred it out so it would just not be so like boom so gaussian blur is going to make it spread out a little bit just make it flow a little bit more and then we added on contrast our hue and saturation to make it that purple that we want it to be all right so let's move on to the ground layer ground layer was fun to play with um i'm just going to take all these off sometimes i use a lot of layers on the ground layers and i, I just don't know just layers in general, I'll, I'll just use a lot in general. So this is the original ground thing, ground thing, ground plane that we used. Uh, I just used my gradient brush, let's see, my gradient tool to just get rid of it. Well, let's get on the gradient. So I just used my gradient brush and I got rid of some of it just like that. You can just pick different spots that you like. And then I used hue and saturation, started getting it to that purplish color. And then I lit up a couple of spots on there. Probably, yeah, color dodge to make, color dodge brings out your colors a little bit. A color dodge layer when you set it to that. My levels, I wanted to make those those parts on the outside really dark. 
and then I add another levels <laughs> then I color balance it to start getting it towards that purple it's like at a blue right now and then this level has brought it down a lot and the thing about levels is you can utilize this to make it really dark but also like even though this looks confusing sometimes make sure you're utilizing these because these can pinpoint highlights and low lights in your in your composition so that's really good to use and then the last one I used hue and saturation I barely used it it was on negative two but that's all good and then our mountain overlays I'm not even we don't have to go over these two because I kind of showed you guys already how I do the backgrounds just make sure you really take the time to match your backgrounds and your lights your sources light sources things like that so so then I added this rock and this rock is pretty interesting to me because let's see all right let's take these off so here was the rock initially let's get to it all right cool but here was our rock initially and then I added a little bit of curves to bring out that light from the moon see how these parts actually have mask on the light from the moon as well that's one thing that I'll go over so it's hitting the light would hit like somewhere around here in my belief that's where I, I was going for just make sure you're really confident when you're doing your own lighting and then I just added a curves adjustment and see that that boring arch that's all I needed on here and then I added a mask to it just a black mask so I could reveal in white and see how the white's just gonna bring some light to it we don't need that much on here maybe I could have used that much but not in this case I was fine then I added a glow layer and this glow layer is on color dodge and the only thing I did to this was I just kind of traced around where it would pretty much be for the glow on the rock and then I added a second one to bring out that color even more like maybe you could even add like you could you could play around with some of these and get better glows if you want or just different ones to vary so I just added a whole bunch of glows on and then for the last one this was the cover the glows right so they're kind of spilling out like crazy so I just added this on and I could have added even more just to start let's see my brush isn't changing size from my keyboard all right so all right, there we go my keyboard is acting up all right so the pretty much what I did on this is I so if I delete the layer mask it's just gonna be the normal rock and that's what not what we wanted so then I made so that's why I made it black a black layer mask on and then I paint over some of the glow so it's not just spilling out of the rock and just looks like unrealistic see how that's making it everything just look like actually contained inside that's a good technique to use when you want to keep glows inside of something so then I use the big rocks in in bricks layer that's uh, all good right there and then the Devin Booker layer, this one was very uh, intriguing to say the least, okay? So here was the the original Devin Booker that I cut out. No, actually, let's go back. Let's go all the way back. Let's see. We might not have, uh, okay, okay, here we go, here we go. And, all right. Yeah, because we did a lot on this, okay. So here was the OG Devin Booker that we masked out. Then when I masked him out, this is why you see the skins right here. I masked out his skin to keep it separate from the jersey and, and things like that. So this is a skin layer that I made. And underneath, I made a, I just made a custom shadow. I didn't even use like just like the normal thing you see with distort and stuff. I just made a custom shadow of where I thought it would be. And for the skin copy, what I did on this is I utilized Topaz Labs. So if you guys don't know what Topaz Labs is, it's a plugin. I can just go and do that real quick to show you. So you go filter, Topaz Labs, adjust, and then it's from Dynamic Pop is what I usually use. I don't know what levels I used of each, but I use Dynamic Pop first and then I use Light Pop Smooth after. And you see it gives in that texture, just that cool texture, but we're not using that because we already had used it. And from that, I, I just made it a lot darker. So the hue and saturation, color balance, all that just made it darker with all of these layers just adjusting and making sure I have it looking cool, okay? And then we use Topaz Jet Adjust again, and we adjusted everything to make it look darker. So the main things that I would say to make things darker is levels, curves, and possibly exposure, but not too much, but levels and curves, make sure you get those down, because that's really good for lighting and shadows, okay? And then our, our Phoenix Lit, lit layer is right here 
and this is where we lit up like the Phoenix part okay so that is Devin Booker right there on the floor then we just got our Disney layer right over here um, I don't, yeah we don't have the OG OG pick but that was Disney Castle you guys know what Disney Castle looks like I believe and then this was our front layer front haze front layer okay a front haze that we just wanted on there then I have my Paul George layer and what we did with the Paul George layer is that, that was the original Paul George that I masked out and then I actually used Topaz Labs on him again to give him just some of that just some uh, skinning and then I just yeah so okay let's get rid of this we didn't use this one I just positioned him at a different angle and I also used the puppet warp tool um, I'll show you guys what the puppet warp tool can do at its height so if you were to use puppet warp tool you just go to edit puppet warp and then you can actually pick spots on the body that you would like to use and sometimes you just got to get used to this as well but you can just move around parts of the body but obviously you don't want to make it look like like really bad um, but yeah you can just utilize different parts on the body and you can even put things behind put them in front but yeah that's how you use puppet warp I just use that somewhat to make some things look in different parts and that was pretty much it for the Paul George layer then the hue slash adjust that was just a, a thing I was going through like oh I kind of want to make it like this color and stuff so then that's what we added on there detail and projection so I added those details this was all manual from my from my my pad my pen tablet that I use but if you don't have a pen tablet you could just go and do it your do it by yourself just use I all I used was a normal brush guys and I just used a normal brush and I kind of just brushed on at, at spots where I thought look look pretty cool okay and then lighting and projection this was the lighting source and let's get into here that I had a little bit of spark layers that I had these are the spark layers just a normal stock image and then I add a little bit of motion blur to make those blur a little bit so that was cool and then so yeah on on this part I think what, what's going on oh yeah this is the purple layer that I use and for the sparks and I just added a hue and saturation on that to make them purple right simple enough um, so then our front front goods uh, as what I say these are like some of the things I use just to make all those details look better and better levels color balance uh front rocks front rock that i used i blurred that out to give it some type of depth so it's like you're seeing into the photo because when you're making a design think about looking into um think about looking into your composition you're not just working on a on a computer screen a flat computer screen you're looking into this right and that's going to help you out is you're looking into it not just looking at it and uh actually i want to go over how i did the the light source real quick I didn't I didn't go over that so all you got to do for the light source guys is this is what I did one sec I kind of just went like this and I would color I would just color from here put one put one down here you hold down shift and then you can go to the next spot and then after you do that you can uh, distort it however you want you can just distort that light however you would want and that makes it so you can just get whatever type of angles that you want right so distort it just with distort you can distort with perspective all different types of things you could do to distort things so like you know and then once you're done with that add a layer mask and you can just gradient map stuff out so boom say how I got that now it's a gradient map so it's like it's flowing into it right simple things that just add up to make it pretty cool at the end and then let's go up let's go up what else do we have oh yeah that's pretty much it so the not for purpose part is because I just used not for purpose after because let's see I'll just I'll just redo what I kind of did at the end so I press control shift alt E that makes everything combined into one visible layer and if you're on Mac it would just be control shift command E and then from there I made it a smart object and then I would go to something like camera raw filter in the filters tab and let's just let's just play around with the colors I have a whole uh, filter raw tutorial just to show you guys 
kind of what you want to make sure you're using but i just play around with these usually sometimes i don't even have a a, a clear mission i just go with what feels good but that's good for right now i'll just show you see how it makes such a difference from one thing to the next that's actually crazy and then at the end i'll use something like a color lookup and go over it that see that's actually a pretty cool uh lighting but it looks kind of crazy at the same time we're just gonna go with one let's see so say i have a color lookup you can what's cool about color lookups is uh you can actually adjust even the color lookups, but you gotta, you got to, okay. So let's, let's merge these together. Give it a sec. <laughs> All right, let's merge these together. And then from there, say we wanna add like some curves or something, man. Like you can just go crazy with it, right? And that kind of brings out the light source right there I like a lot right just from that curves layer brings out the light source a lot and so that was just not for purposes and we added a space field brush at the end my space field brushes are just up up in my brushes so let's see I'm gonna make it that blue to fit just for this tutorial to Tut not tutorial breakdown I keep saying tutorial because I'm so used to doing tutorials so I have space field brushes where are they right here and i add a little bit of those on the outside give it some some like variation right and that's really the design breakdown guys that's pretty much how i got this done i hope you guys enjoyed um i hope you guys give it this a shot too just like making sure you go through everything and just breaking it down because if you go through your work and break down what you did on previous um projects and things like that it's going to help you get those those signals to your brain like oh this didn't work oh this really did work i'm gonna utilize this again something i gotta get better with as well but make sure you guys drop a like if you enjoyed comment down below what you want to see from the channel going on if this helped you let me know and until next time it's been castle scope man hit that red subscribe button and everybody say scope peace <music>